Hello, this is Jamal Studios and this is our original fantasy action adventure, The Fall of Nail. Episode 9. After a good night's sleep, the two young men carried on with their journey. They worked for hours on end until finally towards sundown, the harbour was now visible. We're too late, announced Nathaniel, noticing more than a dozen boats setting off on sail. Maybe not said Jacob as he pointed to what seemed to be a large cargo ship. As the two warriors approached the boat, they noticed 18 rough-looking and able-bodied men loading it with a variety of crates, all of different shapes and sizes. Greetings! We are both travelers on a long journey. I was wondering if it was possible if we could get a ride on your vessel, asked Jacob as he approached the men and their ship. As the men at work sighted the two young-looking warriors, they stopped loading the ship and began to approach them. We have no money, but we will more than welcome the idea of earning our keep by working throughout our time on your vessel, continued Jacob, at this point becoming a little uneasy as the rough-looking men began to circle him and the young knights. Nathaniel looked around and smiled as he noticed that almost half the men were armed with either a stick or a knife. It was clear at this point that both nail warriors had been targeted to be victims of an armed robbery. Why don't you lay down all your valuables and allow us to decide how you pay your way? Said one of the rough looking men. I know what you're trying to do and I must tell you that your intentions are ridiculous as well as suicidal. Warned Nathaniel, confident he alone was enough to take out all 18 men. As the young knight uttered those words, one of the sailors attempted to attack the young warrior from behind with a stick. Nathaniel, without even looking at his attacker, responded by countering the attack with, with an elbow to the sailor's sternum, which he followed up with a back fist to the face, which flung the knight's assailant to the floor. This set the pace for all the crooked sailors to attack at once. Nathaniel's brute strength made it impossible for any of his attackers to put up a decent fight, as he punched, headbutted, kneed, and flung his attackers all over the place. Jacob easily kept his attackers at bay, with mainly the use of his smooth movement combined with his accurate kicking attacks. In less than two minutes, the gang of crooked sailors were reduced to nothing more than a bunch of incapacitated victims, tamed by inflicted pain. You may sell with us. No payment is needed, said a young, tall, bald and hefty man with an eye patch over his left eye, as he stood on the ship that was clearly his. Dressed in a white shirt over a pair of brown trousers, the stranger had attentively watched the whole fight from where he stood. Minutes later, the ship's crew gathered themselves together and got the ship sailing off. As the ship sailed across the sea, Jacob took time to observe the waters and the beautiful scenery it contributed greatly to create. I see you like to appreciate the beauty of the ocean, said the man who welcomed the noble warrior and his comrade on board the ship. Yes, it's breathtaking. I've never traveled by sea before, admitted Jacob, comfortable with the idea of conversing with the stranger. As captain of a pirate ship, the waters have been my home since the day I took the role as a man. Tell me, great warrior, where are you and your friend going? The dark regions. The dark regions? You two must have a death wish. It's something we have to do. After watching the fight you and your companion had with all my men, I can't help but see it as a waste of two talented fighters to risk their lives by going to that place. But that's your choice and I will respect it. I, on the other hand, have no interest in facing almost certain doom with my crew. This is why I will take you to the Ascetian region. From there, you'll be able to reach the heart of the dark regions on foot. I understand, responded Jacob sincerely. Your friend doesn't look too good, said the captain. Jacob turned to where Nathaniel sat, only to find the young knight coughing loudly and continuously, while covered in a feverish sweat. Nathaniel, are you all right? asked Jacob as he approached his comrade with genuine concern. But Nathaniel couldn't even stop coughing long enough to respond. Instead, he fainted. With the help of the captain and some of his crew, Jacob moved Nathaniel to a cabin where he was laid in a bed. His wound has been infected with a deadly poison, informed the captain as he inspected the scar on Nathaniel's face. Is the infection serious? asked Jacob, now getting a little worried. He may not make it whispered the captain as he moved close to the noble warrior. Jacob, unprepared for the prospect of Nathaniel's death, took a seat beside his sick comrade. There could be a chance of saving him, but I can't make any promises, said the captain, then leaving Jacob alone in the room with Nathaniel, who seemed to be gaining consciousness. I can't believe this is it for me. I always saw myself dying in battle. 
It was either that or dying honorably of old age, said Nathaniel, whose voice made it very clear that his strength was deteriorating fast. Everything is going to be fine. A cure is on its way, said Jacob, in an effort to build up the potency of his comrade's fighting spirit. I at least thought I would have at least lived to tell the woman of my dreams how I felt about her, continued Nathaniel, unable to sustain any positive thoughts. Jacob, promise me two things. One, you will destroy Aiden's evil, and two, you will make sure Princess Lilith has a happy life. Jacob, now taken by Nathaniel's pessimism, held on to the knight's hand and said, I promise. As Jacob completed his vow, the captain walked into the room with a small bottle that had in it a red liquid substance. The pirate then proceeded to ensure Nathaniel drank every drop of the unknown liquid that was clearly bitter in the warrior's mouth. This will restore your strength within the hour. You will, however, need to find a cure in the next 22 days, informed the captain. As promised, Nathaniel's full strength was restored within the hour. The knight, who seemed a bit humbled by his experience, walked up to the upper deck and approached the ship's captain. I owe you my life, said the young knight. Don't worry about it. I did nothing you wouldn't have done if the situation was reversed, said the captain. If you're ever in the kingdom of Nell and you're in need of anything, go to the royal castle wearing this and you will get all the help you need and more, said Nathaniel as he presented the pirate a ring given to him by the king. A ring that was only given to the most revered citizens of Nail. Thank you. I may take you up on your offer, said the captain, touched by the young man's gratitude. Suddenly, with no warning at all, a harsh thunderstorm unnaturally began. A giant prehistoric looking sea monster then emerged from out of the water and blocked the path of the ship. As the crew worked together to steer the ship away from the creature, a beam made totally of water splashed onto the ship. It was the sea hazelites. Hand over the Nail Warrior, or I will destroy you all, said the evil being in a large thundering tone. Jacob instinctively wanted to walk forward, but was held back by Nathaniel's hand. This thing only need know one of us exists. So far on this quest, I, I have sustained the most injuries, so it is only right that I go forward. Remember, if anything happens to me, the fate of the kingdom lies solely in your hands, said the knight quietly. At this point, Jacob wanted to object to the knight's decision, but an echo of the words said to him by Elzadar held him back. Nathaniel then drew his sword and walked forward. I am the one you seek, cried out Nathaniel in his usual loud and confident voice. The water hazelite saying nothing became a large watery hand and bounced on the knight, causing both of them to fall overboard. Jacob ran to the side of the ship to visually pinpoint Nathaniel, but his effort was in vain. For as the storm passed and the sea creature returned to the depths of the sea, Sir Nathaniel vanished into the water. That is the end of episode 9, but before we go, answer this episode's question. If Jacob is a Christian, is it right he allowed Nathaniel to sacrifice himself? Refer to the Bible and give your answers via any of Jamar Studios' social media platform links, which can be found at jamarstudios.com. Like Water, The Next Age is now available on paperback and in ebook format via any Kindle device. Also, check out the Jamar Studio website, Twitter page, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channel for the complete Like Water series and all other Jamar Studio features.